Well, 18 minutes before 8, thanks for staying with Morning Live. Economists are hoping that the South African Reserve Bank might consider slowing the pace of uh, interest rate hikes. Uh, this after Statistics South Africa released the annual consumer price index, uh, which uh, saw a decrease from 6.8% in the month of April to 6.3% in the month of May. And that, of course, bringing little relief uh, to consumers who have been impacted by the high cost of living. Now, the Consumer Price Index uh, measures monthly changes in prices for a range of consumer products and can also be used as a cost of living index. So to help us break down what this data actually means for consumers and of course for our economy, we are joined now virtually by uh, Patrick Kelly, Stats SA's Chief Director for Price Statistics. Patrick, thanks so much for your time. Welcome to Morning Live. Thank you very much. Good morning. So looking at uh, those stats, uh, the consumer price inflation, 6.3% uh, in May and um, uh, uh, down from 6.8% in April. Now, uh, this index, uh, of course, is one that many uh, South Africans are looking at and hoping that it spells good news overall. But uh, should we be getting too excited at this point? Well, look, this is a, a good step down and largely driven by a slowdown in inflation in food products, uh, which obviously is of uh, concern to uh, all people in the country. Um, but, uh, you know, there, there are uh, many dynamics and many products in the CPI basket uh, that, that are moving in different directions. Um, I think from a consumer point of view, we should remember that the CPI is measuring the rate of change. Uh, so any positive change means that prices are increasing. Uh, just uh, this reading shows us that they're increasing at a slower pace. Uh, all the price increases that we've experienced over the last year are pretty much still baked in to the actual prices that we're paying at the shops. So... You know, if we, if we break that down further, uh, Patrick, so we look at housing and utilities, for example, uh, those have increased by 4% year on year and uh, contributed one percentage point. Uh, then you have miscellaneous goods and services that increasing by 6.3% year on year, uh, contributing 0.9%. Uh, what does that mean for lay folk in terms of uh, just uh, breaking down those figures and what it means for our debt levels and also uh, inflation yeah so look uh, the, the cpi is comprised of uh, 414 different products uh, so for example if we if we make it simple uh, motor vehicle insurance would be a product maize meal would be a product and these get aggregated up into the sort of categories that you've referred to um, and each of uh, the uh, categories and the products has uh, what we call a weight which is the uh, based on what households have actually spent uh, in a particular period in time. Uh, and so these determine then the relative impact of price changes in each product on the overall rate of inflation. So for example, uh, food has a weight of 17% in the overall CPI. Uh, if we want to go to housing and utilities, uh, you know, one of the things that probably we're going to look forward to there um, in, uh, is, is municipal rate increases, municipal electricity and water tariff increases, which would come through in July. Uh, and, you know, NERSA has indicated that electricity price increases will be at around 18%. So that'll certainly have a big upward impact on the rate of inflation. Uh, you mentioned the miscellaneous category that's mainly comprised of personal care items, uh, for example, soap, shampoo, toothpaste, and those sort of things, as well as financial services like insurance. Um, and on the insurance category, uh, we have seen uh, fairly large increases in medical aid premiums. Uh, those are running at about 8% year on year. So, you know, we look at all of these things, um, uh, Patrick, and in the end, what we are concerned about as uh, consumers is just whether this means I'm going to be paying more or less. And at this point, after how many consecutive rate hikes have we had? About 10? Uh, I think everybody just wants to... We will even take a steady at this point, uh, you know, but uh, thinking about another rate hike, I mean, this is something that I think uh, most consumers uh, can ill afford at this point. If you look at by um, how much your mortgage bond, for example, has increased over these uh, consecutive rate hikes, 
it's astronomical. But, you know, does this, can we read anything into, uh, into this that the MPC may take into account and maybe think of giving us some relief? Well, it's certainly not Statistic South Africa's job to uh, comment on monetary policy issues. And we don't directly measure uh, mortgage rates within the CPI. Uh, so we would look at housing uh, from a kind of more indirect angle. Uh, but uh, so, so it's, it's, it's kind of difficult to comment. And certainly those people that do have debt, uh, interest rate hikes uh, do impact them. Uh, you know, the reason that uh, interest rates are used as a tool to uh, manage inflation back downwards is really to try and uh, soak up any excess uh, that might be uh, sitting in the economy. A lot of the increases that we've seen are driven not necessarily by internal factors, but by global factors. Um, and the Reserve Bank would be concerned that uh, the increases in those specific categories don't then percolate through to some of the, uh, for example, services categories or, or durables uh, that perhaps are more domestically driven. Uh, but it's not to say that prices never go down. Uh, for example, uh, we've had massive inflation in oils and fats, for example, cooking oil and margarine. And uh, we have actually now we're at negative 2.4% uh, on that category. And we did see month to month decreases in some of our meat products uh, in May as well. So, and, and, and thanks for at least trying there. I know I tried it. I tried it. <laughs> and, and, and we know how it goes uh, with you guys, Patrick. You do not venture into certain spaces. But looking at transport, for example, an increase of 7% uh, year on year, you know, the pressures on that um, international geopolitical uh, pressures. So uh, if we look at uh, the percentage that that has contributed uh, to uh, this particular basket, let's talk about that. And uh, also, are we likely to see any more in this particular regard just from observing? And again, if you're not willing to go there, I'll understand, Patrick. No, no, not at all. So I think within the transport category, there's really two major factors that we want to look at. One is uh, the purchase of vehicles, and that has been climbing. Uh, that's, um, you know, it's currently around 7%, uh, which uh, is uh, historically pretty high. Um, and that's probably, uh, you know, driven a lot by changes in the exchange rates, uh, because we, we either import or export. So there's a kind of paid parity going on there. Uh, but obviously, the one that has more immediate impact on most people are fuel costs. Um, so if we just think back, we peaked uh, with inflation at 7.8% in July last year. And at that point, fuel inflation was over 50% year on year. We're now down to 3.5% year on year. So there has been a dramatic slowdown in fuel inflation. That's not to say, as I explained earlier, that the prices have actually dropped. Uh, but um, you know, if we look at June, uh, which would be the next month we're going to measure, fuel prices have come down in June, uh, so that would certainly assist at least in the short term. And uh, all of this, of course, uh, very interesting because, you know, I was watching yesterday um, the British uh, House of Commons, uh, the Prime Minister's question time, which was very interesting, um, looking at, of course, inflation and uh, talking about um, mortgages especially and then also just trying to uh, get a hold of uh, some stimulus from government in order to deal with that. Uh, but... Uh, Speaking of those sort of issues again, uh, Patrick, and, and looking at what's happening in South Africa, um, do you by any chance know at this point uh, the default rate with regard to um, mortgages, uh, home loans at this stage because of these drastic increases, as I said, about uh, 10 consecutive interest rate hikes and they've really hit hard? Yeah, I'm afraid I don't have that kind of information to hand, but certainly uh, it's, it's a real risk. Uh, you know, mortgages make up about 60% of household debt in South Africa. Uh, and so uh, we, you know, if people are, are, are kind of over indebted and stretched, uh, I, I guess that would that would be a real risk. But I'm, unfortunately, I don't have a specific data to hand on that. Mm. And then, of course, um, the um, uh, we, we, we are trying to bring down our inflation rate as a country. And very often, this is something that we speak to very abstractly. But what can consumers do 
uh, Patrick, to try and, uh, I suppose, um, hasten, speed up the pace of bringing down that inflation band? Yeah, look, I think that uh, it's uh, one not to, to go on a buying spree, uh, which would probably be pretty difficult for many people at this point. Um, look, I think that, that uh, you know, what we see when we look at the actual price data that we collect is that typically, you know, there's a number of observations where we see increases, there's a number where we see uh, some decreases, and there's a large bunch in the middle where there's no change at all. Um, and so it's not to say that because we've measured an a, you know, inflation rate of 6%, every product in every shop has gone up by that amount. Uh, there certainly would be uh, opportunities for consumers to, to find cheaper uh, products or those that have lower inflation rates if they look and, and look around. And then uh, going back to that basket you were talking about, uh, if we take a look at, um, you know, things like sugar, um, uh, sweets, desserts, uh, those things became more expensive. And uh, again, you know, uh, uh, what contributed to this increase, for example, in that ban? Yeah, so absolutely. Um, so we saw white sugar increasing quite significantly, 2.7% um, just between April and May, uh, chocolate by 2.9% uh, in the same time period. Uh, so there, there definitely does seem to be some pressure. Uh, sugar prices have been increasing, generally speaking. Um, if we look at the kind of agricultural level and, and, and producer level, we, we have seen increases in, in sugar prices. Um, and, you know, because this is kind of an agricultural based product, these are typically based on uh, changes in weather conditions and the, the yield that farmers are able to extract from the sugar cane that they've planted. Uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll have to keep an eye on that one to see whether that uh, continues on that upward trajectory or whether it joins its other friends in the food group uh, to, to slow down. Mm. And um, I know you're not a fortune teller, but uh, given what we've just seen and also what we know, uh, you know, you spoke about, for example, um, uh, utilities and the prices there likely to go up uh, given the increases that have been approved by NERSA. Um, are you able to at this point maybe just, uh, you know, uh, give us a sense patrick of what we are likely to see are we likely to see this uh, slowing down or uh, will things like uh, the utility prices uh, throw a spanner in the works once again from going down yeah look i mean the the utility prices will certainly have uh, an upward impact uh, if they are above last year's uh, increases which which the indications are at least for electricity that that's the case um, I think many municipalities kept the increases slightly lower during COVID, so 2020, uh, 20, 2021, um, and, and we'll see how they, they flow through this year. Um, I did mention the fuel price and the oil price seems to be generally under control. Um, the other key factor that one wants to think about is uh, the exchange rate. Uh, this is uh, important, not just in terms of our import of goods, but also a number of our products, even if we export them, they are benchmarked. Uh, to a kind of dollar exchange rate. Um, so, you know, we, we saw that big shoot up last month uh, in, the, in the rand dollar exchange rate. It's moderated somewhat this month, uh, but it's obviously quite unpredictable. Uh, so, you know, it, 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 it's, it's difficult to really uh, look ahead with any certainty. Um, but I think that given that food is really a key driver, uh, at say on a month to month basis, food and, and fuel costs are the key products that drive uh, kind of month-to-month -month changes in the CPI. Um, and so the trajectory for food has been now, uh, you know, for the last couple of months slowing down. Um, and uh, well, I've just mentioned the factors with regard to fuel. Uh, and so, you know, that probably does look positive. All right, um, we've just lost that connection there to Patrick, but uh, you know, I think uh, practically has already summed up for us uh, what we needed to know. Uh, Patrick Kelly, Stats SA's Chief Director for Price Statistics, talking to us about the uh, release uh, of the annual consumer price index, which decreased from 6.8% in the month of April 2023 to 6.3% in the month of May. And uh, obviously we wait to see, you know, what all of this will mean. And as Patrick was saying, you know, we look at that basket and we look what is still to come, those utility rate increases, but we'll see what happens.